Alrighty, folks. Um, I've already opened up the isolation box here to see what the results were, but I'm going to show them to you anyway. I'm kind of displeased. I had actually videotaped the total construction of my isolation box here, um, but I don't think I'm going to put it up on YouTube right this moment because the isolation box is it's not a complete failure, but it's surely not as good as it could have been. Here's the lead top, and there's lead underneath the aluminum foil. It's pretty heavy. Underneath there's the skirt. And as you can see, inside of the isolation box I received 254 counts in 20 minutes. And that is equal to 12.7 counts per minute. 254 counts divided by 20 minutes is 12.7. Originally, I did 278 counts in 20, which is 13.9. So, let me write that down. As you can see, that's not really a big difference. 13.9 versus 12.7. What's the difference there? It's like 1.2 or something. Let's see. 13.9 minus 12.7. That's uh, 6 over 5. Why does it have to be that way? That's 1.2. So the whole isolation box gave me a reading 1.2 counts per minute lower than it would have naturally been. And that just isn't good. And this is thick too. This is thick. Like like there's a pile of lead in here. There's lead, 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 lead. Underneath this thing there's truckloads of aluminum foil just stacked in layers. Oh my god, there's a lot of lead in this thing. And uh, that's the lead I got from United Nuclear. And let me pull off some of the skirting and show you underneath here how much lead there is in this thing. See, you go underneath there, you see the lead there. There's only one piece right there, but there, most of the rest of this is double coated all the way through with lead. And yet, it's not stopping it. So, that tells you one thing about background radiation. It's very hard to stop background radiation because it's cosmic rays mostly coming from space and they're very, very strong. By the way, this uranium glass plate piece has not been sitting in the room the whole time. I have a feeling, though, that the uranium glass piece will not affect the readings in here very much if I were to run it inside of the isolation box. The reason being is the isolation box probably would block us from that. We've already proven in earlier videos that lead is pretty decent at stopping the... Um, well, let's put the uranium glassware inside the isolation box since it no longer seems to be an effective isolation box. Now it can be a containment box. I am pretty sure that the Geiger counter will not detect much from it anymore. Alright. Well, you know, I'm just feeling like lead is just failing here all the way, all the way around. I just don't have enough lead needs to be significantly higher in lead to stop everything that's coming through. Hmm. Well, I thought I would show you folks. Um, I spent a lot of time in the construction of my isolation box here and it's just totally failing. Well, maybe it's not failing. It's definitely stopping the um, uranium glassware. that. Huh? Okay, it's not totally failing. It stops uranium glassware just fine. If I took the uranium glassware and put it out on the table here and move the isolation box out of the way, being far enough away from it, and I wanted to get a good distance away so I'm about where I was on top of the box. See. Anywhere around this thing, I'm picking up some radiation. Not much, but some. That's not very good geometry there. Hmm. 18 to 20.
Yeah, it works. But it doesn't work very well, and it doesn't do enough about cosmic radiation. So it's definitely working. Look at that. Alright, I think we can say for a fact that it works. But it's better at doing stuff like uh, lower energy uranium piece here than it is at uh, blocking cosmic rays. I'm going to need a lot more, I think, to block cosmic rays. I mean a lot more. Because I'm just not getting it. Isolation box is fine for this, but it's failing for cosmic rays. Some of it still gets through. You gotta admit though, it does a pretty good job against the uranium. Oh well. Wow. Let's see how it does quickly for totally out of time here against the higher radiation piece. There we go. The radium compass. As you can see, that's definitely radioactive. Let's put this over top of it. Let's move the uranium out of the way. Hmm. I'm having some serious issues here because I have a sheet of lead now. I have a complete sheet of lead. And yet, it's going right through. Creepy. That's lead. And it's definitely alpha because you move like a couple inches away from it, nothing. By the way, if anybody's curious what this is that I'm messing with, it was a uh, radium compass. You can see in some of my other videos. I mean, this is very definitely, very definitely alpha. You get right over it, you pick up all kinds of alpha, move away a couple inches and it's gone. Definitely alpha. And this is definitely a piece of lead. And even if it wasn't lead, even if I were like lying and fooling you, it's definitely aluminum foil. Obviously, but of course it's lead too. And look at it go, right through. And this is not the most sensitive Geiger counter on Earth. I wonder if I'm actually causing more radiation than I'm getting rid of with a Bromster long effect. Let's move the lead out of the way and put pure aluminum foil over top of the container and put it over top. No, that's not doing anything. Hmm. Well, well, well. This is like anti-shielding today. <laughs> I'm having shielding errors. If anybody's watching this and wants to have any comments, I know from past experience that a thick sheet of lead, like an inch thick, will stop damn near anything. Well, not anything, but I mean a big one thick block, uh, one thick, one inch thick block of steel. Um, great. A one inch block of lead, there we go, uh, will stop just about anything, and yet I'm having these horrible troubles very, very, very strange. Oh, this is Tom from anti-proton.com watching the laws of physics break down before my eyes as usual. Bye-bye.